united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation by KSCE Channel 38 Christian Television. And now, United with Christ. Welcome to United with Christ. My name is Charles Isaac. I'm the pastor of Christ the King El Paso. And uh, we want to say welcome and uh, how delighted we are that you're with us today. And I'm delighted to be here. October 2017th marks the 500th anniversary of the Protestant Reformation. So throughout the month, many uh, pastors and teachers are commenting on the Reformation. And uh, what is the Reformation? If you're unfamiliar with it, the Reformation was a movement that actually started in the 15th and 16th centuries uh, in, com in, in reaction to abuses that were going on in the church at the time, the medieval church. And the Reformers sought to correct these abuses and uh, uh, leaders, pastors, uh, such as John Calvin, Martin Luther, John Knox and others uh, were at the head and spearheaded uh, this movement. The re reformers were guided by the principle that the church had drifted from essential teachings of scripture. In an effort to recapture those, they gave us what we call the five solas of the Reformation. The five solas have to do with sola scriptura, Scripture alone is our rule for faith and practice. In other words, what we do as Christians is guided by primarily the Word of God and uh, what we believe our doctrinal stances are defined again by the Word of God. That our relationship with Jesus Christ is sola fide, through faith in Jesus alone that we have been saved or made right with God, uh, justified through grace alone, sola gratia, and that this salvation is by Christ alone, solus Christus, and that we are to live our lives for the glory of God alone. So today we'll, we'll take a look at those, and we want to encourage you uh, to think through them uh, think what these things mean. They've created the foundational principles of the Protestant Reformation. We also want to remind you that if during the program you have a prayer request, please call the number uh, on your TV screen, 532-8518. We'll be happy to pray for and with you. And if you have questions, you can send them to an email at our church, ctk. PCA El Paso at gmail.com. So please uh, avail yourself of that as well if you have questions regarding the five solas of the Reformation. Let's read a passage of scripture that I hope is familiar uh, to all of you. It's found in Romans chapter 3. We'll read this passage and then we'll have a word of prayer and we'll dive right into our study for today. Looking at Romans chapter 3, starting in verse 21, now hear uh, the word of God. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by His grace as a gift, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood, to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in His divine forbearance He had passed over former sins. It was to show His righteousness at the present time so that He might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? 
It is excluded. By what law? By a law of works? No. But by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. Is God the God of the Jews only? Is He not God of the Gentiles also? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Since God is one who will justify the circumcisioned by faith and the uncircumcised through faith, do we then overthrow the law by this faith? By no means. On the contrary, we uphold the law. Let's pray and we'll get into our study. Father, we thank you for your holy, divine, inspired, and inerrant word. And we ask, Father, that you would open our eyes through the power and ministry of your Holy Spirit. Allow us to see and embrace the truths found therein and to live fully and completely zealously committed to you and to your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So sola fide. Let's take a look at this and, and talk about what the Apostle Paul was trying to get across to these believers in Rome. Sola fide. By faith, but by faith alone. He makes it very, very clear that everyone needs faith, but it's by faith alone that we are made right or justified by God. So the question comes, what is faith? What are we talking about? Uh, in the early church, even at the time of Jesus, certainly later in the medieval church, and I think right up into modern times, people have an idea about faith that somehow faith is a force, a power, a strength that we have within us, and all we have to do is stretch that faith out into uh, the, the cosmos into uh, God's realm and somehow touch Him uh, with that faith. And while a certain degree of that is true, faith is not merely a force. Because if it is, then it becomes all about you. How strong is my faith? How much faith do I have? What can I do to increase my faith? And those types of questions. So what was Paul getting at here? Let me read you a quote uh, by the famous preacher. He's long dead, A.W. Tozer, but many are, of you may be familiar with Dr. Tozer. Listen to what he had to say. This is remarkable, remarkable and, it, and it can be life-changing. Listen, believing is directing the heart's attention to Jesus. It is lifting the mind to behold the Lamb of God and never ceasing that beholding for the rest of our lives. At first, this may be difficult, but it becomes easier as we look steadily at His wondrous person, quietly and without strain. Distractions may hinder. But once the heart is committed to Him, after each brief excursion away from Him, the attention will return again and again, resting upon Him like a wandering bird coming back to its window. Faith is the least self-regarding of the virtues. It is by its very nature, scarcely conscious of its own existence, like the eye which sees everything in front of it and never sees itself. Listen to this. Faith is occupied with the object upon which it rests and pays no attention to itself at all. While we are looking at God, we do not see ourselves. Blessed riddance. 
The man who has struggled to purify himself and has had nothing but repeated failures will experience real relief when he stops tinkering with his soul and looks away to the perfect one. While he looks at Christ, the very things he has been trying to do will be getting done in him. It will be God working in him to will and do. You see, faith is only as good as the object, or rather better, rather than object, faith is only as good as the person that you place that faith in. So let's look at what Paul was saying. And I think he was, among many, many other things, whole books have been written about this, but among the many things that could be said, we're going to look at just three. One is, I think he's addressing, first of all, a single humanity. A single humanity. Next, we see him talking very uh, remarkably about a single, a single act. And finally, a single source. Now again, we could say a lot more about this, but I think this will give you a good idea of where the Apostle Paul is going. A single humanity. You see, why is sola fide important? Because it needs to apply to everyone, all human beings. And so look at verse 21, if you have your Bible. But now the righteousness of God is manifested apart from the law. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus for all who believe. For there is no distinction. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Everywhere he says all, the context requires that we read what he's talking about. All human beings. And in Paul's mind and in everybody in the first century, particularly Jewish uh, uh, people in that day, all of them saw humanity basically two groups. Jewish group, Gentile group. That was all of humanity. And Paul is saying that all, both Jew and Gentile, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Justification by faith alone involves the restoration of a single humanity. God is, and His purpose was, in and through Jesus, to bring both Jews and Gentiles back together and create one new humanity. A new humanity. Listen to these scriptures. One of, I have a whole list. We don't have time to look at all. I'm just going to give you a few. First one comes from Isaiah. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills and all the nations shall flow into it and many people shall come and say, Come, let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that He may teach us His ways and that we may walk in His paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, which is exactly what happened in the book of Acts. And then Paul picks this up and he says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and all and you are all one in Jesus Christ. People in the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, all people, regardless of the time, have all been saved, justified, made right with God, one way and one way only. Genesis 15, 3, or 15, 6, excuse me, says, Abraham believed the Lord and the Lord counted it, imputed it to Abraham as righteousness. 
That's how Abraham was justified before God. And he's called the father of the faithful. Paul quotes this passage in Genesis 15, 6. In the next chapter of Romans, makes it very clear that all human beings throughout time have always been justified or made right with God by simply believing, by trusting Him, having the object of their faith as God Almighty. But you know, it's human nature, very quickly, we begin to add to our faith. Why the Reformers were so set on this word alone. They said we can't allow anything else to come in. Paul is demanding that in the context of this passage, that it is by faith alone plus nothing. We can't add anything to it. He's going to explain that to us in a moment. So look at what he says. In first, in, in uh, uh, Romans chapter 10, Paul said this, that the Pharisees, the religious leaders of that day, and I would argue that today, we still try to do this. Even when we know better, we will still do this. Being ignorant of the righteousness of God, we seek to establish our own. We do not submit to the righteousness of God. That's Romans chapter 10. Paul even rolled out his resume in Philippians chapter 3. He said this, I myself, Paul's talking, he's actually being ironic. He's being a little bit, uh, 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 using irony and trying to uh, uh, be, be over the top, uh, be expressive. He says, I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh. If anyone thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised the eighth day of the people of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever things were gained to me, I count them rubbish. I count them loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. You see, Paul was saying, in Romans 3, what we just read, in Romans 10, in Philippians chapter 3, he was saying this, you cannot be made right with God simply by your ethnicity. And you can't be made right with God simply by uh, being a Christian and being baptized into the church and kind of hanging around the Christian subculture. And you cannot be justified by doing something, by merely observing the law. It's impossible. Well, all those things are good. Fine if you're born into an ethnic group that you like. Fine if you were raised in the church. But that cannot justify you. Listen to what Dr. G.I. Packer said in his book, Knowing God. Really, really great quote. We all stand by nature under God's judgment. His law condemns us. Guilt gnaws at us, making us restless, miserable, and in our lucid moments, afraid. We have no peace in ourselves because we have not peace with our Maker. We need forgiveness of sins and assurance of a restored relationship. That's what justified means. More than anything else, we need this. And this gospel, the gospel of Paul, of Jesus, of the other apostolic witnesses, offers us this right relationship with God by faith before anything else. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Well, what, what's this single act then? What's he talking about here? We've seen he wants to restore humanity, a single humanity. He also wants to create this single humanity through a single act, sola, one, one act. And look what he says in verse 24. We are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood to be received by faith. What Paul is saying is that grace is a gift. And the Reformers absolutely affirm this. 
that grace as a, is a gift from God. It's one way. Grace is, there's nothing to set over against grace. It is its own thing. It is the basis for our redemption, the sacrifice that he made. Propitiation means that God was satisfied with the sacrifice of Jesus. More than that, he was sacrificed with the life of Jesus. On two occasions, God spoke from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Listen to him. He's the object of our faith. Jesus Christ is the atonement. The book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 9, says that Jesus is the mercy seat. That's what propitiation is talking about. He is the place. Atonement for our sins takes place in Him. And this atonement, as it is in the Old Testament, includes forgiving of sins, and they're being removed from us, and the application to us of the very righteousness of Christ. See, it would be one thing if all God did was just forgive our sins. That would be great in and of itself, but He does something extraordinarily more magnificent than that, something it's hard to even get our heads around at times, and that is that not only does He take our sins away, He not only satisfies on the cross the wrath of God, Jesus drank the cup of wrath down to its dregs, and on Him was laid the sins of us all. But then He does something unimaginable. He then removes His holy garments, and He clothes us with righteousness. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, He who knew no sin was made to be sin for us, that we might become or be made the righteousness of God in Him. You see, it's not about our faith. It's about this single act of satisfaction. Both Jesus' life and His death what Dr. John Stott called the, uh, the, the, the Christ or cross complex. His incarnation, his life living in perfect obedience to the will of the Father, his death upon the cross, his burial in the grave, his resurrection, his ascension into glory, and finally his session at the right hand of God the Father, who then hands Jesus the scepter of righteousness and says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Amazing. A single humanity restored by a single act. A single act. Faith is not about us. It's about the man Christ Jesus. We do not dare, and the reformers were very clear, we do not dare place our faith in our faith. How strong it is, how wonderful it is, how, how powerful it is. And that some people have lots of faith and some have little and all of that. We all struggle with faith. But if it becomes about your faith, all you'll see is your faith. And you'll never look to the faithful one the one who gave his life for us. Listen to another great preacher from centuries ago, Horatius Bonar, in his book, The Everlasting Righteousness. I can't encourage you to read this book enough. It is an amazing old book, classic book. Listen to what Bonar says about this very thing. The strength or kind of faith required is nowhere stated. The Holy Spirit has said nothing as to quantity or quality on which so many dwell and over which they stumble, remaining all their days in darkness and uncertainty. Faith is simply believing, feeble as our faith may be, that we are invested with this righteousness from God. For faith, listen, for faith is no work, nor merit, nor effort, but the cessation from all these. It's resting on Christ. The simplest Feeblest faith suffices, for it is not the excellence of our act of faith 
that is, does anything for us but the excellence of him who suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Faith does not come to Calvary to do anything. It comes to see the glorious spectacle of all things done and to accept this completion without a misgiving as to its efficacy. It listens to the it is finished and it says, Amen. That's what faith is. Faith is building a single humanity on a single act from a single source. Love's kiss. Most of you have seen the, the Disney fable, a story, they got it from another fable, of uh, the beauty and the beast. The story is like all fairy tales. The beauty finds a beast or a frog, the princess, the beautiful princess. And through love's kiss, she turns the beast into a beauty. And that's what Paul says in verse 25 and following. This was to show God's righteousness because of His divine forbearance. He passed over sins so that He might be the just, not, He might be just and the justifier. You see, God's love, His compassion, His mercy, His grace, kiss, His holiness, His righteousness, and His justice in Jesus Christ. And through that single source, Christ on the cross, bridging the gap between our sin and our unholiness and God's holiness and justice, Jesus becomes our sin bearer. I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me, the hope of glory. And the life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. I hope you'll trust Him. I hope you'll give your life to Jesus by faith. Don't struggle to believe. Just rest in Him and believe that what He did for you on the cross is sufficient. Make Jesus the only object of your faith and trust in Him. If you have any prayer requests, please call the line that, uh, that we have for you here at the station. And I hope that God will bless and keep you all in His amazing, amazing grace. Let us pray. Father, thank You for Your kindness, Your mercy. Thank You for granting us the gift of faith and the gift of grace through Jesus Christ, the source of our salvation, for Your glory forever. Amen. Thank You. Thank you for watching United with Christ. We pray this has been a blessing to you and we invite you to tune in again tomorrow. We invite your comments, questions, or prayer requests. You may contact us at KSCE Christian Television, 2201 East Wyoming Avenue, El Paso, Texas, 79903, or call us at 915-532-8588 during regular business hours, or you can visit us on our website at www.kse.com. God bless you.